Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make an API request in JavaScript. So we're gonna learn all about how you can grab data from an external source on the internet, bring it back into your website, and then display it on the page. So today, we're gonna to be using one of the most fun and free APIs on the internet, which is called catfact.ninja. This is a website that gives you the ability to get free and random cat facts whenever you want. All you have to do is just enter in this URL, catfact.ninja forward slash fact, and then there's this JSON that gets returned back. So what we're gonna do is figure out how in JavaScript we can go get one of these facts, and then we're gonna fill it in here so that the cat actually has a fact underneath of it. All right, so the first things first, let me explain to you what I already have over here in CodePen. So I have this div, which is called card, and I've just given it some basic styles. And then we have an image, which is just our cute little cat photo. And then here we have a place for the cat fact. So what I want to happen is whenever we click on the cat, and actually maybe down here we can give this a cursor pointer. Whenever we click on the fact, I or whenever we click on the cat, I want the fact to be populated from this catfact.ninja website. And we can do all of that in JavaScript, but I just wanted to show you guys exactly what's set up here because we're gonna be grabbing some of these elements. So the first thing that we're gonna do is get access to this fact. So down here, I'm just gonna say const fact, and that's gonna be equal to document.query selector. And we wanna grab the dot fact, or we wanna grab the element with the fact class on it. So now we have access to this fact. Now I wanna show you real quick, we could say fact.textContent is equal to new content, and now that'll get updated. So this is a way for us to be able to update the content that's inside of this div right here from JavaScript, and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go out, get the cat fact, and then we'll populate it right there. Now one of the things that you wanna do whenever you're grabbing data from an external API is you wanna wrap it in try catch blocks. And that's just because there's a lot that can go wrong when we go out to the internet. Like maybe their internet goes down or maybe the service that we're getting the data from isn't able to return the data. There's all sorts of reasons why we might need try catch, but it's just like a good idea to be doing some error handling here. So I'm just gonna do try catch and then actually we can put this up on top. And then in here, we're gonna fetch the data. So what we need to do is what's called a get request. So we just need to fetch the data. This is kind of the normal way that you get data from an API. And it'll return back this JSON and we're gonna to have to kind of parse through that and get the fact. Now, uh, one thing I wanna show you here is that we have two fields on the JSON file. We have a fact field and we have a length, length field. So the fact field is where we're gonna get all the text that we need to populate this with. Okay, so let's go ahead and fetch that data. Now the way that we can do this, and I'm just gonna say const res, and that stands for response. This is like the common way that you do this in JavaScript. So const res, and that's gonna be equal to, and we're gonna be using the await keyword. So await is something like this. And we can just type that in there, and then we're gonna await the fetch. And we're gonna be fetching from this URL right here. Now, anytime that we're using this await keyword, we need to wrap it inside of a function which has uh, in an async function. So I'm gonna go ahead and create this. Uh, we'll say get cat fact, and that's gonna be a function, and this is gonna be an async function. And essentially what this means is that, um, and actually I'll explain this in a second, but let me put this inside of here. So an async function is a function which is performing some sort of an asynchronous operation. Essentially what that means is that it's performing an operation that takes a long time. So when we go out to the internet, it might take you know 500 milliseconds or potentially longer for us to get this data back. And that means that the browser doesn't wanna to have to wait around for all of that to happen. So an async function tells the browser that, okay, we're gonna be doing something that's gonna take a while, so why don't you just go off and do whatever you need to do and then JavaScript will kind of handle uh, allowing this to happen. So when we fetch here, and actually this needs to be a string, when we fetch the cat fact, we're awaiting this asynchronous operation. And that just means again, when we fetch something, it might take a while. So we're just kind of letting JavaScript know that we're gonna wait for it. So this uh, result is gonna be returned back to us and then we can get the data. So the data is gonna be all that JSON data out of there. We can say data 
is equal to await and res.json. So what this is going to do is it's going to parse all the JSON out of there and we'll be able to get an actual JavaScript object. So the last thing we're going to do is this line of code right here. We're going to set the texts or the facts text content. And this is just going to be data dot fact because over here, the fact is where all of this, uh, like the cat fact actually is. Okay, and then down here in the catch, we might just want to console dot error this. You could handle this differently depending on what the application is. Um, but then otherwise, we'll run this function whenever we click on the cat. So uh, I think the cat had a class of dot cat. Yeah, so we can get access to the cat. We'll do that up here. It's going to be dot cat. And then here we'll attach an event listener. We can say cat dot add event listener. And we're going to listen for the click event. And when we whenever they click, we're going to get a cat fact. OK, so hopefully if we didn't make any mistakes, this should give us what we want. So now when I click on this cat, you'll see that we get this cat fact. I click on it again. We get a new cat fact. Every time I click on this, it's going out to that API. It's getting that data. It's parsing the data and then it's setting it as the text content. And once again, we put this inside of an asynchronous function. That's because we want to be able to kind of write this code in a way that's not super ugly. And because the fetch function is going off and it's taking a while, like it's going to take the browser a little bit to do this, uh, we kind of have to do that. But otherwise, that's pretty much how you would grab data from an API. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.